Hello lovely people and welcome back to my digital painting tutorial series. I know it has been a while since my last upload, but I hope you're ready for the next topic of digital painting. This time we want to cover rocks. So first things first, the all over painting process won't be that much different than I covered already in my last videos. We start with a rough underpainting with a first sketch, just some rough lines to, to uh, experiment with the forms. Because as I talked about plants already, also rocks have so many different forms, so much variety to them. So you need to be clear what you want to paint first, right? For this year, I don't want to go for a little stone, something like that. I want to go for a massive chunk of uh, rock. Um, I have something specific in mind. Uh, let's try if I can explain it to you properly so that you know what I'm talking about, what, I'm, what I want to create here. So, imagine a stack, a, a hill of, of some matter, doesn't matter what. If you cut a layer to make a flat surface on top of it, then you get this, this kind of very, very even uh, areas, which are in contrast to the rest of the chunk. <laughs> I hope you got what I meant, but that is actually exactly what I'm aiming for here. You have this, uh, all this matter of rock, and then you slice it up in the in the in the um, on the surface on the top surface a little bit, and you get this uh, slightly angled, flat, even surfaces. So when I start this kind of things, then I like to start with the top layer first, the top um, top surface. Sorry. Because from there, like if I would paint a cube, I start with the with the top side, and then I think of how it's going to be all over the body. Same thing here. You see me sketching the surface, the top surface first, and then I think of how to connect them to the ground. For example, I can let the lines go more uh, inside, so that it's it's looking more um, more broken, like uh, a huge river stream uh, went there and uh, yeah formed this chunk of rock over the centuries, over the thousands of years. This kind of thing, or I make it like I do it here, like like a hill. So it's it's wider in the down than it's in the up. I think that's enough here for our basic sketching. So what I'm doing now is uh, grabbing the lasso tool, selecting all the area and just block in a basic darkish um, brownish uh, color. So that's totally enough for now. What I want to do next is grabbing my soft round brush, make it quite big on low opacity and then just fill in some basic light and shadow. So going a little bit more in purple direction for the, for the shadow and the down. Just something like that. Exactly. You see my light source in this example is coming from the upper left. So the right downside is covered in shade. And for the light, I, I go more in the direction of yellow, greenish, and then fill in some, yeah, some rough areas with, with some light. Cool. Uh, let me add some, uh, some light source here that we won't forget about it. And what is happening is the light is shining from the upper left and is covering this 
flat surfaces I talked about in the beginning with light. Light is reflected from the surfaces. So where almost no light is, uh, is going to get is this part here. The right side, all the surfaces that are on the other side than the light source. And as soon as we know that, as we fix that problem, we can play with, with different colors, with different brightnesses here and try or and uh, continue to shape our painting. So I think I can merge that all together. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. I feel better doing it um, because now I have the control over the, the whole painting. If I do a stroke, then it's covering everything. It's just a feeling. I told you in other videos already. That is how I like to do it. Now I grab the lasso tool again and clean up some shapes. We want to have hard edges in some areas, so we want to have soft edges in other areas. And with the lasso tool, you can create perfect sharp edges. So I grab the same color we had already, maybe a little bit brighter for the for the. Um, uh, the edges something like that I don't know really why but edges are always m brighter they're, they're kind of highlight areas so that might be a good rule of thumb to follow if it's too much we can erase it later anyways but for now let's see how that looks like if we can work with that Yeah, that looks a little weird uh, if the shape is totally alone here, so we need to have more sharp edges here and there. Let's bring some detail in the, in the lower part of the rock. So again, left side covered in light, right side darker. That was one huge problem or one main problem I had during my rock studies that it's quite easy to paint a massive piece of anything but having texture in it that works that really works that makes sense is the difficult part so here for example I need to connect the upper surfaces with the down somehow it needs to look like a rock it should not be too round it should not be too, too smooth it needs to have cuts and pieces breaking apart. It needs to have some, some, some grain, some texture to it. And I, I want to show you uh, one example of how that could make sense. Another flat surface here. Basic rule again, if you want to separate shapes from each other so that they don't look alike. One thing in front of another thing or one thing behind another thing, then work with brighter and darker colors. Like here, everything that is going in direction of dark and direction of purple is totally in contrast with everything that is lit up in this, what is this? Uh, light brownish grayish color same here again you need to think like a sculpture not like a sculpture like a sculptor i i hope that's the right term this this dude who is uh, creating art out of uh, 3d objects out of this clay stuff <laughs> okay Next thing I want to show you is, you see that there is already a contrast between light and shade, especially in this area I created this uh, lasso area right now. But most of the time, rocks are just quarters, cubes, with way more surfaces. And most of them are quite hard. So we don't want too much soft edges here. Let's have most of them hard, 
and later soften them out if it's too much. Again, the highlighted areas at the corner, uh, at, the, at the edge. I know everything looks plain so far, but we get to texture, we get to some detail later. One step after another. Looks good so far. the same thing with this surface as well here. Okay, uh, you decide when you want to start with it, but I like to clean up my painting now and then. Just erasing some some outlines there left from, from my uh, ground sketch and shaping the, the, the outlines of my, of my painting a little bit more. What I also learned is that we need texture in the, in the shade parts. So I grab the light color and my brush with a very low opacity and then bring some basic structure into the, into the dark parts of the painting as well. We can darken up it later anyways. Let's have some better light dark contrast between this uh, little rock in the front. The massive one, massive one in the background. Cool. And again, it's a continuous play, playing of finding the right shapes. Creating shapes is a last tool, giving very less of uh, color to it see if it's too hard, if it's too soft, zooming out, checking it. It's just experimenting. You're experimenting your way uh, to your final painting because you have in mind what you want to paint, this kind of rock, how it looks like, but not in detail. You don't know exactly how the rock works from the beginning. You, you try to, to make it feel, uh, to make it look nice, cool, and also realistic a little bit, that it works. So that is what I'm trying to do here. So let's add some rim light here as well. here. Cleaning up some lines, some areas. And you see I'm doing already some brushwork here in the in the cutted uh, surfaces. Try to add a little bit of highlight, always where you got some sharp edges. Oh, 
Okay, let's add some first texture here. I try to create random shapes. They should not look too round. They are kind of edgy and I fill up the whole space with these shapes. Some of them can, can uh, fuse, some of them should be separated and then go with very low opacity. Soft round brush, lighter color, darker color, doesn't really matter. Experiment with the blending mode, with the layer mode. Um, maybe what I do here is uh, grabbing the smudge tool, smudge finger, and smudge a few of these areas into each other. Some of those edges stay sharp, some will be smudged. So find your right way, how it looks good. But th this process we want to continue again and again after a certain time. Adding some texture now, layer a little bit more until we feel like uh, it's enough. So actually most of the things I'm telling you here are getting repeated and repeated again and again over time. So please understand if I sometimes forget to explain something properly or forget to cover something. Always feel free to ask your questions in the comments below or mention something that wasn't nice or you didn't understand properly. Um, yeah, I give my best here to explain you my way of painting, how it works best for me. Maybe you learn something from it, but if something is not there for you or something is missing or you really would like to be covered by me then you always feel free to mention that it's not a problem so cleaning up more areas here and there still some black lines i can see through and time for merging again so one one layer here everything on one layer for me at least. So let's add some more texture. So I'm grabbing here a texture brush. You can create one yourself. You can download texture brushes. I think everyone downloaded one or more brush sets of other artists already. Uh, you can use any brush that is not a totally clean brush. Even with a round or a sharp brush you can creates this kind of effect. It's more easier with a texture brush, that's why I'm using it here, but it's possible with any kind of brush. Just having some, some areas here with different color, a little bit more bright here, a little bit more dark there, creating lines and then see how it looks like. I'm going for happy, happy accidents here. So I'm doing something what I don't know will the, the, the result be. <laughs> so yeah, always uh, throw in some color, some different shapes and then zoom out and decide if it's if it's working or not, if I need to change something or is it it's cool like that. I want to, to go for this rough look rocks and stones have. So they have different colors of course, they have light and shade and some texture, but they also have everywhere little surfaces. They are reflected, they are ref reflecting light different. So by adding those little surfaces here and there with uh, different brush strokes and different uh, value, you can you can kind of fake this this appearance. Let's add some texture like we did before on the other part, the other side of this uh, smooth flat surface, just like we did before. Creating some selections with the lasso tool. Don't forget the down one here, the little one.
So then grabbing the soft round brush again and going in with some brighter color. Just a tiny little bit. It makes a difference. Even if it's shown just a little, it makes a difference in combination with the other um, methods we will use later. Nice. Can be merged. So let's focus on those areas. They still got those black lines from the first uh, rough sketch. Some of those lines we can just erase simply. Others we can use a clipping layer mask for and then just paint with the same color on top of it. Just like that. Although I think we should add some rim light here on this side, on the right side. That is always cool when you have one th side the light source is coming from and from the other side where normally should be the shade, you have a little rim light, like there's a second weaker light source um, that, that renders the whole, uh, the whole object you're painting in a more stylized, in a, my, my opinion, more nice way. Just cleaning up here and there. Okay, same thing here. Like I told you earlier, we have this little rock in front, so it should be brighter, it should be more highlighted, and the background should be more dark. Yeah, stands out much better already. Let's add some more sharp edges here, those elements. Just sit that what I did now. You can see already the difference, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, here and there may be some cracks where the rock broke already. Always nice, but not too much. And a crack works like that. I think we we covered something like cracks and holes already in objects. You have the dark part where it goes inside the object and the edges are normally highlighted, a little bit at least.
let's bring this stuff here in shape. I have no idea myself what, what actually I want to do here, but just let's just see how it's turning out. All right, that is going in the right direction. Okay, let's adjust the contrast a little bit more, some brightness here, and a little bit more contrast. Now I create a new layer, create a clipping mask, put this layer style on um, overlay, and now go with a big round brush with a warm light color on top of it. Oh, too much, a little bit less opacity. Yeah, like that. You can see the glow. It has much more power already. Same thing we do for the darker parts. Just a little bit more saturation. The whole rock is going in a, in a yeah, very, very brown, muddy kind of color direction. And then adding a little bit more purple to the shade as well. Maybe a little bit blue later. Let's see. Yeah, see the difference. Amazing. Cool. Ready to merge. So, another texture brush. For this kind of method, you really should use a texture brush, or you need to do it by hand. You just go over the painting and then adjust the opacity of the texture you created. Erase it here and there, where it fits and where it doesn't. Yeah, just try around things. It's very hard to say the way how you should do it. I can just explain you what I'm doing here and how it works for me and you can adapt it and try it your own way. It always comes with a little bit experimenting, but I think you got that already from my <laughs> videos. Doing the same thing for the brighter parts. Ah, it's not. It's not how I would like to have it. Come on. Okay. I think. I think we don't need this. Not the brighter one, at least. Let's create some texture in another, in another way. Maybe with a little bit of opacity. Nah, it looks it looks just muddy somehow. Okay. Let's continue. Let's do some further polishing here, and just defining more shapes, more different and divided surfaces.
All right. Okay, honestly, there's not that much to talk about here. If something comes up, if I have something in mind, I feel the need to tell you, then I will do that. If not, yeah, just watch the process, ask your questions in the comments, like I said already, um, listen to the music. Oh, by the way, if you fancy this music, feel free to visit my other YouTube channel. Link is in the description. It's called Astro Sounds. I'm doing there. Yeah, remixes of video games, uh, mostly in Nintendo, and yeah, check it out. I paint my my um, artworks there for the background video myself. I animate them. I just try to create a all-over nostalgic uh, experience. Yeah, check it out, and also feel free to give your feedback so that I know what to do better. I always like to learn. Okay, I would like to have another surface on top of the surface because it looks too flat. It really looks like somebody just grabbed a saw and cut this rock into two pieces. So I would like to have another surface on top of it. So what I do is grabbing the lasso tool again, creating an a area and then brighten up this area a little bit with a soft round brush. Okay, then create another selection. That is the area that shows that it's a little bit higher than the other surface. And this one will be darker because same as with the big rock piece on the lower right, it's not hit by light that much. See? And already you got the illusion of another surface on top of the surface. That is what rocks normally do. They are not that even, that clean. They have bumps there and here some other surfaces. Uh, nothing looks, looks uh, how I say, too clean. Everything should look rough.
Now let's paint some further cuts and cracks. Not that hard than the one uh, we have already, but just with a brush, some darker lines here and there. See how it looks. What is also quite nice is when you painted your darker lines, then go with some brighter color to the opposite space, to the opposite um, area, to lighten it up a little bit. That creates a depth between the so uh, both between those both areas. Just try around a little bit. Okay, I feel like it's time to add the rim light I was talking about before to the right part of the, of the painting. I chose a greenish color for now, but we can change it later because we created a new layer and created a clipping mask from that. And now just here and there adding some rim light. Also keep in mind that it should not only be the, the rim, so the edge, sometimes you should go a little bit more towards the light side of the element just to show that it's not a flat a 2D object, it's a 3D object with, a, with surfaces that, that are uh, yeah, more wide than just a line. Some places do the rim light a little bit more intense a little bit more bright, on others very weak and in the end we can erase some parts if needed or lower the opacity. Yeah, I like it. That looks cool.
So what is also worth to mention is that you can project the light coming from the right side also to a surface, like here. Then you don't have only the edge as a rim light all the time, you also project the light onto some surfaces and create an illusion of a 3D object. Let's add some light here as well. Alrighty. Okay, let's create some more sharp edges here. I feel like it looks a little bit too too soft right now. Ah, didn't really change something. All right. Another one here, maybe a little bit too strong, but looks fine. That looks cool already. Just creating some more surfaces here and there. Try to make this few pieces here look like real rocks. So clean it up a little bit.
So merge the stuff and I feel like we need a kind of ground. It's just floating on the, on the canvas somehow so I will grab my, my um, texture brush, quite a big scale and then just go with a, a darker brown underneath for now. We can add different uh, light and shade situations later but for now just rough paint the ground here. I thought of making the ground grass, so a little bit more greenish, but then I thought uh, then we also need to paint some additional plants or grass on top of the rock, right? And that is not what this tutorial is about. If you want to know how to paint grass, then check out one of my older videos where I explained it. Um, yeah, so let's go for, for soil here. So you know the game, a little bit more bright with the light hits, a little bit more cold, purplish, darkish in the, the shades. It can be a little bit more dark here. Yeah, that's better. I don't want to put too ma much detail, too much work into the ground. It's about the rock and the ground I just want, want to have, I just would like to have a kind of connection between the element I'm painting and the background. So also here we can experiment with some sharp edges if we want. If it doesn't fit then it doesn't, but let's try it out. I think it works quite well. Since the rock does have a lot of sharp edges, it would look weird if the ground would be totally soft. This little guy here was not shown at all, so we need to create some contrast to make it pop out a little more. Some more bluish light from the right and some warmer light from the left and there it is. Yeah, looking cool. What do you think? Alright, let's grab a texture brush. I just created a clipping mask for um, some texture in the ground. Let's see what we got here. If you don't know anything about texture brushes, but you would like to know how to create them or how to use them, just let me know in the comments below um, if there are enough people asking for that. Uh, I totally can make a video about that. So let's add some noise in there. Not too much, just very gentle. Yeah, with low opacity it looks way better already. Cool, we can merge that. So, I show you now my basic technique I use for most of my paintings. I just create a clipping mask, fill it with any color, go to filters, go to add noise and create a noise. Then set the layer to soft light, create a layer mask on that, paint it totally black so that it's not shown anymore and then with a soft round brush 
and the white color go on the mask and let some noise appear where you want to have it. I explained it a little bit more in detail in my older videos. Um, it's always the same procedure. So it's just giving the object a little bit more grain. So just trying out, I, I have no idea if that works, but uh, the same technique we tried earlier, just grab the lesser tool and select some areas, not to round, more edgy stuff, and then go with a soft round brush, this time with a little bit more darker colors. And I think I will keep it. It looks nice. Very low opacity though. Okay, let's crunch out those rim lights a little bit more. I picked a very, very bright yellow. And I don't know if it will work in the end or if it's too much. Just create some rim lights here and there, brighten all the edges a little bit up. But I feel like it might be too much, so we might erase a few of them later on. Yeah, a little bit too much. Nice. I'm happy with that. Let's merge that. Oh, let me try one more thing. I would like to have a big crack on the surface. So, so I just selected an area. Again, not too round. Try to keep it edgy and you're yeah, just filling it with a little bit more darker brown here. Then invert the selection and go on the edges of the, of the crack with bright yellow. The cool thing is if it's on a separate layer you can just grab it and put it wherever you want or rotate it even. I feel like there it's maybe not too much fitting. Not really. Maybe... Maybe somewhere else though. Yeah, for example, that works. So it's just about uh, to finish it up. Clean it up a little bit here and there and a little bit more further polishing and then we are about done. So, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. <laughs> thank you very much for watching guys and I hope you learned something with this tutorial. Uh, let me know what you what what you would like to see next from me. Uh, I got my plans already 
but maybe you got something more important. So, see you next time.